it's Jason here, um, just with another tutorial for Open Tunes. So as most of you guys know from class, we've got a couple of issues to iron out still, but I'm going to be doing my best to do that in the background while I just get these tutorials up for you guys so that I don't leave you too far behind. Um, so I apologize for that. All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna take a quick look at how to go about importing footage into Open Tunes itself. All right, so the the footage itself needs to be um, in an uh, <laughs> words an image sequence. All right, so that image sequence also then needs to follow a very specific um, sort of naming convention. Otherwise, Open Tunes is not going to read the file. So, what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to show you. Um, I've got two files here that I've downloaded. I've got a GIF uh, that I downloaded off of Dribble, and then I've got an MP4 video that I've rendered now in the past. Right, so I'm going to show you how we can go about breaking these into image sequences um, and then how we can bring those into um, open tunes. All right, so one method, especially for GIFs, that um, complimentary one of our students, Kyle, um, he shared this link to us. It's uh, easygif.com. Right, so you can either upload your video footage or GIFs from here. Um, or you can paste the URL and it will break it into um, an image sequence for you. All right, so you can also always just give that a go. But how I'm going to go about doing it is using both um, Adobe Media Encoder as well as Adobe Bridge um, to just set these up for import. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do with Adobe Media Encoder is I'm going to select my videos and I'm gonna click and drag on the left-hand side all right, you'll see here I can add to separate sources or I can add them, stitch them to a, um, a, a single source, All right? So I want them to be a separate. Uh, so I'll import those. You'll see I've already got it. The preset is set to PNG, all right? Our other option uh, here for the preset is match source or with alpha. I'm just going to leave it with match source for now. And I'm just going to render these into specific folders. So the GIF I'm going to send into the GIF image folder that I've made and my file, uh, my movie file, I'm going to put into the MP4 images and I'm going to render those out. All right, so that will do its thing. When I finish up these renders, you'll see that um, the GIF images, which is being done first, you'll see it's being broken frame by frame into all of its different images. Um, and obviously the same then for our MP4. Okay, so while that's busy finishing that render there, I can actually jump into Bridge and I'm going to navigate to desktop where my file is, uh, image sequence files and GIF images where all of this is done. All right, so currently these are labeled as just a number.png and OpenTunes will not recognize this. All right, so what we need to do is I'm going to hit Command or Control A to select all of my frames and I'm going to go to Tools and I'm going to go to Batch Rename. All right, so here we've got a couple of options and you'll see our current file name over here is set up in a certain way and this is what it will look like after I'm done playing with it. All right, so what I need to do is I need to make sure that whatever the text is, project or file or whatever it is, it has to have a full stop right over here after it, otherwise it's not going to work. So you can add or uh, remove as many fields of information as you would like. I'm actually gonna get rid of this image over here, or that piece of information rather. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that my file name is project full stop, all right? I can also then make sure that my um, image sequence number I'm gonna set to 0001, all right? Just for the sake of it. And you'll hear, you'll see here I've got project 0001.png. Uh, and I'm actually just going to quickly call this GIF project so that I know what I'm looking at. Okay, so I'll rename all of those and it will then do its thing. Boom, and now they all read GIF project uh, and then zero, zero, whatever number. All right, so again, if I go back into my MP4 sequence, I'm going to select all of them, Control or Command A, Tools, Batch Rename. I'm going to now relabel this rather than GIF project, I'm going to say MP4 project and make sure that it reads mp4 project dot and then frame numbers. Um, they have to be four digits dot png. And again, I'm just going to call this triple zero one and I'm gonna say rename. All right, so once that has now done its thing, as soon as I jump into open tunes, how I would go about importing that, those files is I can go into my X sheet. 
I can right click and I can say load level. Now I need to go where to where those files are. So I'll go to my desktop, I'll go to image sequence files, give images, and you'll see here that it's a single image. All right. If you've got multiple different sort of frames, what's going to happen is if you import those, they're going to be placed over separate columns rather than on the same um, column in the same level. All right. So if you're seeing that, just make sure that your label is correct, that there is a full stop and then the number and then .png. All right. So this is a collected piece. I'm going to say load and there it is. I can actually play that back and it will run through it accordingly. Okay. Um, same thing uh, on column two, if I want to then just bring in load level, uh, let's bring in my MP4 image and I'll say load and exactly the same thing. All right, so notice how my personal render, this one over here, fills the entire space. That's because it was rendered at full HD, whereas my example over here is quite small. All right, so if I want to zoom or scale that up rather to try and fit better within the bounds of my viewing area, I can grab my animate tool, make sure that it is set to column one, right? Column one, column one. And we can change this drop down from position to scale. And now I can drag either up or down or left or right, and it will scale up accordingly. All right, and then I can always lock these in place so that I don't accidentally mess with them. Okay, um, what I can then do if I were to, for example, only be using this one here, right um, so I'll just lock column two on the pretense that we're not going to be using it um, column one remember that we can change the opacity so we can drop that down essentially to be used as a guide layer all right and then on my column three for example I could then start drawing over that all right so this is just the first step in getting our footage in in the next tutorial I will cover then the actual drawing animating process as well as coloring and then we'll move forward from there. All right, so just a very quick one. I hope it made sense. I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.